Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira. Currently, I'm a professor in the Department of Computer Science of the Federal University of Minas Gerais. This university, UFMG, is located in the city of Belo Horizonte, in Brazil. I will be teaching you static code analysis and compiler optimizations. If you are taking this course, I suppose that's because you are interested in compilers. And that's nice, because compiler writers have a very noble goal. They want to bridge the gap between programming languages and the hardware. Notice that in a way, compiler writers build bridges between people and machines, and this goal becomes each day a bit harder. That's because, on the one hand, software engineers want programming languages with abstractions each time more expressive, but on the other hand, the hardware becomes each time more complicated. So the gap between programming languages and machines tends to lengthen each time. In this course, we will learn a bit about this art of building bridges. One of the foremost goals of the course is to teach you how compiler optimizations work and which information they need to work. And mind it that um, we will talk about code optimization when you talk about code optimizations. We are talking about different ways to improve the quality of a program. And there are many dimensions in which we can measure the efficiency of a program, like running time, memory consumption, and power dissipation. However, in this course, we'll be talking mostly about time. But don't expect much from compiler-based optimizations. I mean, of course they are useful and all, but uh, there is not really a kind of Moore's law for compiler improvement. Each year, compilers might bring something close to 5% of improvement to software speed. That's much less than what we get with the progress in the hardware industry. Yet, these gains are cumulative. But can you think about a way to prove that this statement that compiler improve, uh, compilers improve code speed by 4 or 5% a year? Um, how, how is this true? I will leave that as a thought exercise. You can write me if you get stuck. The second goal of this course is to find bugs in programs. For that, we shall use static analysis to understand the program. Notice that programs are big blobs of information. It's very hard to disentangle them without electronic help. And that's what static analysis are good for. They help developers to understand programs. About the first goal, we will see a lot of different compiler optimizations. I've listed some of them here, but there are many more. For some programs, compiler optimizations can be very effective. For instance, take a look into this program. You can stop the video to read it. What do you think? Can a C compiler like Clang or GCC resolve it entirely at compilation time? Well, any of these two compilers will transform this program into a single statement that prints uh, the constant 800. You can see the assembly in the box on the right side of the figure. That's pretty nice, isn't it? Compilers can do much more than this, though. And our second goal in the course is bug finding. There are many different static analyses that help us to find bugs in code. We can try to find out if no pointers are being used or if we are dive, um, dividing by zero and doing many other nasty and wrong things. For instance, this program here has a bug. Can you spot it? That's a rather tricky bug. You can stop the video and try to find the bug if you want. We will get back into this program in our course on range analysis, but that's a few weeks in the future. But don't worry about this program. That's only if you want to spend some minutes trying to find what's wrong with it. Talking about the future, all the information that you need to do to follow the course is available at the course's webpage. You can find all the slides, the project assignment, exercise, and much more there. Anyways, I suggest you save the URL if you are really determined to take this course. Another option is to simply type DCC888 
in Google or some other search machine. That's the code of the course in our university. Usually the first page that pops up is uh, the course's web page. You will find the content of the course there, in the web page, I mean. And currently we have 24 classes. There are also some classes about LVM, which is the compiler that we use in the first two assignments. In this course, we will be studying what's called the middle end of compilers. A compiler typically has three parts, the front end that deals with the high level programming language, the back end that deals with the low level machine code, and the middle end where we carry out analysis and optimizations. So that's where we will be. Usually the middle end works on some intermediate representation of code. That's a very common pattern. There are many different forms of intermediate representation. For instance, we have the LLVMIR, we have WebAssembly, Bytecode, Java, and PDX for graphics processing units. All these are intermediate representations used by compilers. Something that you must also understand is that we cannot really build the best compiler of them all. Do you know why? Let's imagine that we are optimizing for size. So the shorter the code that the compiler produces, the better it is. Um, here's the proof of that statement. You can stop the video and read it over if you want. But the gist of the reasoning is that if, we, if it were possible to build the best compiler ever, then we could solve the halting problem. Again, stop the video and take a look into the proof. In other words, given a compiler, call it C, it's possible to build a better compiler always. And something nice about this result, compiler writers will always have something to do. They will always have a job to be done. I mean, can you think about a way to prove this statement? It follows from the no silver bullet theorem as a corollary, the theorem that we just saw. I wrote an explanation here. You can read it over if you want. And uh, with these two theorems, we conclude our first class. I hope you will stay in the course. There will be many more classes waiting for you. Till there, feel free to write me with questions, comments, suggestions, anything.